you identify as Korean American? Do you identify as Korean? Do you, and what does that mean to you? Um, hmm. Rolling. One, two, three. Hey everyone, it's Julie Young for Korean American Story and Not Your Average. I'm sitting down today with Huni Kim, chef and owner of Hanjan and Danji, and right now we're at the beautiful Hanjan. Um, and Huni, we're going to be honoring you at the Korean American Story Gala as a trailblazer. Um, Thank you very much. You know, I, I asked uh, Dom Pan of this last year, we honored him as a trailblazer. Do you think of yourself as a trailblazer? Um, you know, I, I, I never did. I never did. Um, when I decided to cook while giving up medicine, you know, my whole goal was not to sort of embarrass my mother. <laughs> that was that was so important. Um, but for Korean Americans at that time, cooking was not even a choice. It was not even a career. And, and even now, there's there's a lot of first generation parents telling their children to be doctors and lawyers and, and cooking, being an artist, it's not a choice. Um, you know, I made that decision 14 years ago and, um, and you're, you guys are rewarding me based on that one decision and, you know, I do feel like a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I did back then. Mm -hmm. When you found out you were getting the Michelin star, how did, how did that make you feel? What was your reaction? Um, I was happy. First was Korean happy. restaurant. I was and happy for my cooks. Uh, no, there. After me, there there has been a few other Korean restaurants uh, in New York actually. and and Japan. Uh -huh. mainly. Um, you know, I, I opened Danji, not even thinking about the Michelin. Mm -hmm. we, we were and we still are not a Michigan, Michelin Michelin caliber restaurant. Meaning, we're not fine dining. We don't have tablecloths. Uh, nothing we, you know is over twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. Very casual. We don't even take reservations, um, Danji. So. You know, to, to run a restaurant where it was based solely on food and, and, and sort of um, trying to please your customers, mm -hmm. having the mission come in and give you a star, that was, that was an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that feeling, that, that happiness, it went away in one day. Mm -hmm. Next day, it was just go back to work. Because mm -hmm. uh, we knew the most important thing uh, were, were, were the customers, mm -hmm. not the Michelin star, not, not the New York Times, not the critics, because um, you know you really don't have much control over what these critics are going to tell you mm -hmm. or what critics are going to say about your restaurant because it is one or a couple of people, but it's the hundreds of customers that come every day. Now those are the most important people. So you know even now um, critics. They're important, mm -hmm. but uh, our major goal is to make sure the customers that come here every day mm -hmm. are, are, they leave happy. Uh, Danji is very small, it's 36 seats. The kitchen is tiny, I think kitchen's uh, about 200 square foot. Mm -hmm. Now, in a small kitchen, there wasn't, I couldn't cook all the food that I wanted to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, especially since when I opened Danji, I was very much Korean American, mm -hmm. and Danji's purpose was to introduce Korean flavors to New Yorkers, mm -hmm. non-Koreans. Um, since then, I had become a lot more Korean in that I took, I took several trips to Korea. I wanted to cook more Korean food, and Danji's kitchen was not equipped to mm -hmm. cook real Korean or, or authentic mm -hmm. Korean food. Mm -hmm. um, so. I felt like I had another story to tell. Mm -hmm. If Danji's story was Korean flavors introduction, Hanjan was advanced Korean. Mm -hmm. And with that concept, with that sort of uh, inspiration, I uh, had, to, had to make a new restaurant mm -hmm. with a completely different kitchen, completely different decor, different location, mm -hmm. just a different story. Mm -hmm. So just to go back a little bit, so you were born in Korea uh -huh. and you lived there till you were four, uh -huh. and then you moved to London. Yes. And you lived in London for how long? Ten, until I was ten. And then you came to the United came States. Here, yeah. Okay, and you and you started in medical school, as we said. Mm -hmm. um, and you went. I didn't realize you went so far through medical uh, school. Like yeah. it was right before your residency when yes. you made the switch, uh -huh. right? I mean, right that's before huge. I applied for residency. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You said that your wife, who's a lawyer, mm -hmm. um, was in full support of you. You know, switching to culinary school because she wanted you, one of you, to be happy in your yes. careers. And as a recovering attorney, I can really relate to that story. Uh, but how does she feel about that now? Is she still happy that she supported? you in that and um, yeah I mean you know I think that's one of the reasons why I work so hard 
uh, because she gave up so much yeah. to, 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 su to support me. Mm -hmm. It was great that she was also very much into food. We met, we dated going out to restaurants, mm. and she knows the importance of, of good food. Mm -hmm. And it just, it doesn't mean just tasty food. Um, it means Quality food, ingredients. Yes, yeah. nutritious food. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, food that, you know, not only tastes good for the palate, but it, it sort of touches your soul a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and she wanted me to cook that. You know, it's for us cooking. Every day is a is a new day. It's a new project. It's not like writing a song where, um, when you have this one beautiful song written, you record it and you listen to it every day. Right. For us, um, we have to make this food every day, and every day the ingredients look different, they taste mm -hmm. different, so it's adjusting. So every day it feels like we're creating, mm -hmm. not just you know when we're deciding on the menu and then we recreate the menu. Mm -hmm. It's it's create, create, create. Do you identify as Korean American? Do you identify as Korean? Do you and what does that mean to you? Um, hmm. I identify myself as an American mm -hmm. who really tries to be as as, as Korean as I can be. Mm. You know, when I'm in Korea, for me my, my mindset is just education, learn, experience. Mm -hmm. It's it's still new. It's mm -hmm. every time I go back I still learn new things. Um, I still meet new people. I still have so much Korean that I need to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I come Korean here... Korean culture or language? Everything. Everything. Culture, language, mm -hmm. people, history, food, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like a student of Korean when, I, when I'm over there. Here, I feel like I'm more of an ambassador, meaning I'm here to promote and teach Korean culture mm -hmm. through food right. um, to all these New Yorkers who come to my restaurant who don't know much about Korea. Mm -hmm. But I know for sure that if they allow themselves to experience the food and one day hopefully go, go to Korea, visit Korea, mm -hmm. meet the food there, meet the people, learn the culture and the history, um, they would respect Korea a lot more mm -hmm. because I don't know a single person who has been to Korea and not loved that country. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Huni, thank you so much. I can't wait to honor you on May 3rd at the Korean American Story Gala and convey to you oh, continued okay. success. Thank you. Thank you for having me.